episode is brought to you by GameFound. Create a free pledge manager for your project. And we're back. Hello, everyone. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Mike Delisio. Welcome to Crowd Surfing, a show where we talk about Kickstarter and GameFound projects and yep. tell you what we think of their art <laughs> or them. That's well, very, that's a, a fair times, statement. A lot of times, that's what it comes. These down are to. largely uninformed reactions. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to tell you what we think as we look at them. We did a little tiny bit of research. By no means, uh, you know, something Exhaustive. you should don't don't take it to the bank. You know. But we do have a lot of knowledge about companies and games and things, and hopefully that helps. Sure, we have um, some context maybe that that uh, comes from doing this a lot. We did not do this last week. Because there was literally no projects. Yes. I don't think anyone ends a project right after New Year's. It seems like a bad time to do it. Yeah, for a number of reasons. I would Even think. this week is <clears throat> it's light. <clears throat> tougher. Other than one very significant project that's going right now. That's right. Support the Dice Tower. <clears throat> we launched our own project yesterday. Actually, a lot of Kickstarters launched yeah, yesterday. Yeah, they did. Um, and... We have not funded it yet. We are $9,002 so away. So close. However, I think we might pull it off. I hope. I hope. <laughs> that would be good. Uh, it would be but really still, there's that pledge. whole like holding your breath until yeah, it happens. You know what absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. And, then and uh, yeah, just the way I mean, it works. And there's a lot of great stretch goals that we'd love to hit, too. So Yeah, so if you like our show, if you would like to continue to support us, that's what this is for. And on the way... There's some nice little gifts here, and also some great dinosaur artwork. I'm really happy yes, with this picture here. Man, so excited about that. All right, I was kind of hoping it would go up by two dollars during that time I'm not frame. Lie, I think I, I am very happy with writing on that water dino. I, that's my favorite character I've made of me yet. Oh uh, yeah, we went up to a hey, ten dollars. There it is. Right, there it is. That's it. All right, let's take a there look at go. other ones. Prognosis death. Prognosis yes. death. You know, I actually don't hate this theme. What yeah. is the theme? I'm not sure I understood. Well, it's a set collection. You're trying to take the credit for curing a patient. Right, you're trying to you're trying to correctly diagnose the patient with what their malady is, and you do Which that is a, by it's playing. It's weird though to have it called prognosis death. Then yeah, I it guess is. I was yeah. confused. Were you trying to save your own and kill other people's? See, that's the part of the game that's a little confusing to me, and I didn't read through the full rules. Is it made it sound like you could almost end the game whenever you want to? But if you end it too early, it's not going to necessarily work out well for you. You know I, what I mean? That's I, I want a promo in. card for this game where it just says, it's lupus. <laughs> is I, it lupus? <laughs> lupus? No, no matter what happens, I'm like, yes. You know what's funny is that we'll the, like the other first thing I thought of is another Seinfeld re reference is there was a fake movie in that show called Prognosis Negative. That was one, the first thing I thought of when I saw this game. So, But I guess each of the cards has a... A, a, like a, a descriptive word, and you play them out together, and it reads off like you know. It's, I, I like that yeah. image right there, the right. splaying of the cards, and all of those. You're supposed to kind of like read off all of those oh. things to give you what the the. It's, it's a typical you know, aggressive, explosive, opportuni opportunistic, op contagious boils. So you read all <laughs> that stuff, and that's the prognosis. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. that's not bad. And the artwork's kind of a love it or hate it sort yeah. of look. Combined with the card frame, I don't dislike it. Yeah, it's, it's I think fine. if I took the artwork on its own, I'd think, ah, it's an okay style. It kind of looks like mind management a little bit. A little bit. Uh, not not as good, but yeah. I, I, see I like this better than that, but I get that you're a fan yeah. of that. But, Here's the uh, but deal. combined I don't with think the this frames, game looks like, bad. Yeah, no, it yeah. is funding, but barely. Uh, they weren't asking for much. They just over five grand, maybe. Well, they um, use the same guy on every card for all that. I mean, that same that guy. That dude has a lot wrong with him. I don't love the dysentery uh, sketch right there, that guy. But <laughs> <laughs> there's also one guy who's got worm, brain worm, oh. there's like a literal worm coming yeah. out of his that, skull. Uh, is, that, is that what that is? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't love that. I thought that was a bottle on his head. I thought it was a knife. No, or it's like yeah, out it's, of his a, head. it's a giant worm coming out. Of All right. Well, All we right. go from a small project to a very large one here. Mm. Rise of the Necromancers. Now, this is actually a pretty short. Run project. I think it launched oh, yesterday. It did launch yesterday. Ten days. Okay. Ten day yeah. project. Okay. And as I didn't say this at the beginning, we always look at projects that are ending in the next ten or less days. Yeah. Usually. Mm -hmm. Because well <laughs> always usually. Yeah. 
we try to keep it in that range. Yeah, so this something was actually, just launched, you know, like yesterday and right. is running for a month, we'll, we'll get to it. Right. right. This was actually <clears throat> kickstarted before, I think, from another company, or at least was released it from was another released company. a couple of years ago, I think, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I know yeah. this because Mythic emailed us last year and asked us, this was played live during the Winter Spectacular. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, we're going we're gonna to be reprinting this game. And I was like, oh, we actually have it on our review shelf. We just hadn't got around to it sure, yet. Sure, sure. Um, they're definitely leaning into the miniature aspect in this project. Yes. I mean, I don't believe all these expansions existed before. I think they're I think that's all new. All new. All I the think, expansions yes. I are think, new. I think both of these, they look to be like large expansions. Both of those are new, I believe, in this project. And uh, But I do believe that if you own the original game, you can get just the expansions. I would think so. I think it's pretty much a straight reprint. Yeah. And then the, they have the Grim Harvest, and then the Undead Sea, and then there's also a pack <coughs> that you get if you back, if you back this, it, yeah, just, which I think they make some of the tokens in the game miniatures. I believe that's right. Like, that's just something you get as a bonus for backing. For backing, yeah. yeah. There, and uh, I guess this Foul and Wicked one is another thing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of content here. Um, the game is very light. It's very lucky as well. Mm. Um so you have to know that going in. It has to be sort of a roll the dice and see what happens kind of game. It leans closer to that than many strategy games, I guess is what I'm saying. It almost feels like a game from another era, doesn't it? It does. It does feel like a game from... Like, you know how there was just recently that Kickstarter for the... Um, the old VHS game, the yeah, atmosphere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This has a little bit of that feeling. Mm. But both the look and the vibe and the way the game plays feels like a game that's nostalgic, but it's not old, really. It yeah. just kind of yeah. feels has that, like it. Has that vibe, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's doing very well. Yep. All right. I have not played this one yet. I will. I am still considering doing it because I'm the only person here who hasn't. I think. And if I wanted to make my own game, yeah, yeah. It's the sixth edition of How to Create Your First Board Game. Now, I feel like we've talked about this one in the past. Probably. In fact, I believe so. Like one of the other editions. Let me look here. Wow, they're they're all the same. The last for the, three have except been. Except for the last one, yeah. Yeah, fifth. Oh, and the other one was an audio book, too. All right, so let's take a look here. This mm -hmm. one raised 3000 so I feel like this one raised 5000 this one raised 8000 okay. Well, I mean, it's obviously working. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming these are just iterations. This one's doing like he's better got the than main ever. manuscript, and he's just kind of, you know, making some updates for uh, as things change in the 1600 industry. 1,600 people back this. Yeah. yeah, he's got a new chapter, a whole new chapter, talking about a Kickstarter trends. Okay. Which is listed right there. New, sure. New to 6th edition. Okay. Um, it sounds interesting enough. My I would not with... buy this book, and I'll tell you why. I don't... If you need a book to help you create a board game, I don't think you're a board game. To... Now, See, now, if this is a how to publish a game, right. that's different. See, sure. that's an interesting point, because to me, I feel like this would be a book that might be interesting to read just as a fan of hobby board gaming. Yes, in that case, you. I'm with you. As somebody that's, that feels like they need a book to show them how to make their game, I wonder how many people that design board games that get published started by reading a book. I also don't you know think, what I mean? and I've said this for years, it says that they're about design, prototype, playtest, print, publish. Not, no one person should be doing all five of those. Ideally. You design, prototype, playtest, right. and you're done. Yeah. Someone else does the playtest, print, publish part. Mm -hmm. does, it, does it seem yeah. to you that, that board game design is something that the best kind of training you can get is by playing a lot of board games. I, That's most everything. I really, you know, to really be, think to be that. Honest. Right. Well, no, I don't think to to build a race car, being a good driver yeah. helps you. Building a lot of race cars makes you a better race car builder. What yes, do you by, mean? No, by building them, but not by driving them. Yeah. You don't have to design board games to be good at it, but if you play a lot of board games, you have a lot of knowledge in your head. You remember how many times we've played sure. games... And we've thought, this designer clearly has not played a lot of modern hobby board. Yeah, That's sure. kind of where I'm getting at yeah, there. Okay. You know? I got you. Yeah. My problem with this is, like, Stephen King has a book about on, on writing. writing. It's called On Writing. It's an amazing book. A book about writing. Yeah. Stephen King, for me, for my money, gets away with that. Mm. The man has written a metric ton of yeah. words. Sure. The author here talks about their experiences at game 
designer and publisher. So I looked them up on BGG. Mm -hmm. The company they say that they're a publisher uh, of, like mm. a, you know, that they run. I couldn't find that publisher okay. on BGG. So I looked up the person, and he's got like six games, but they are games I had never heard of. Sure, they're very small, yeah, little known games. <coughs> Maybe he is an amazing uh, writer and has a fantastic understanding of this stuff. Right. But it's hard to know that because yeah. there's nothing that I can be that I can point to and say and look at the results also yeah. of yeah. this book and the knowledge contained within. So I don't know. I agree with you. I would like, read this it for is not fun. a master. Yeah. This is not a master class. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, right. That's true. I'm surprised master class hasn't hit board gaming yet. I just wonder if the, the if the there's no audience. The, yeah, if the design. Yeah, well, obviously there's 1,600 people who want to create their own board game. Yeah, but they're willing to pay however much this is. Master classes, I think, are a little pricier, but. All right, I'm sure it's a fine book. Mm-hmm. Interceptor two, Interceptor reboot. Yes. Do, 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 do. Now you guys are talking about <coughs> this. This this definitely looks like an older game from the 80s That's and 90s. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, it does. And the font and everything. Um, yeah. I got I got down to. It's a miniatures game. Yeah. Once you got to the hex maps, right? You know it. <laughs> you I was all good one. with this, and once wow. I got down to that, I was like, nah. I gotta go. They're calling me from my home planet. I, I do like the go. way the ships are. But I will say, when I look at these spaceships here, they don't look particularly unique. They don't. They at look all. Like, they look like something that you would get out of a... You In know. fact, these are painted, these bottom ones. Yes, they are. Very similar to an A-Wing from a, Star Wars. A lot of them do look like uh, Raptors from Battlestar and A-Wings. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't like the look now, of the Now, this is from FASA. Okay. And they got... I mean, they were... I believe they were the original... Yeah, they did. Battletech. Okay. Um, okay. So they're coming from that background. So a lot sure. of people who like their games are going to like this map. I mean, this is they were ones who made BattleTech. BattleTech maps look like this—a right, bunch right, of hexes. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And in space, it's kind of hard to like. What kind of terrain will we have? <laughs> yeah. Well, none in space. No one can hear you, hex. <laughs> All right. How's it doing? I'm curious. It's doing okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, too. It's doubled its funding. Fast Track. A simple strategy game for kids five years and above. So this is for kids, yeah. which is why I'm more merciful to this than I might be otherwise. It's a cooperative game asking for a thousand bucks. They've already it's funded. Tiny, yeah. It's a teacher, I believe, that did, that did it. It's obviously got a bunch of uh, yeah. I mean, this is a small, small in scale, small in scope project. Again, this is a good use of crowdfunding. I agree. I you think know, this is a good. Is it a I game like we're that, looking to play? Probably. I like not. those meeple-looking things in the front cover and the monsters. That's a nice dichotomy to art. It yeah. blows my mind, right? And this is why I, I cut very little slack to other projects and their looks. Mm -hmm. We just talked about how small this is. Yeah. That board and that cover mm -hmm. have a good look. Sure, for what that it is. It is nice artwork. Mm hmm <clears throat> on those meeples, you know, with the the hat and the yeah, backpack the and the little monsters and mm -hmm. stuff, that's that looks professional. Mm -hmm. This is again the goal here is about a thousand dollars, and yeah. that's that's great. So I don't understand when a game's goal is twenty grand and <laughs> it looks like no one paid attention to that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. It's got to be a priority. The, mm -hmm. the, a game's look is a big part of you attempting to sell that. Yeah. I, I think. I mean, right. it's it's that first impression. It's going to matter at some point along the process. Yep. <coughs> All right. Well, speaking of first impressions, <coughs> Shogun Tactics. And speaking of a realistic Ooh. goal, this doesn't have one. $56,863. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is a an alternative chess game. I really wish immediately... I'm kind of out based on that in the, in the sense that if it was a chess-like game, that's fine. Don't use the word chess. Right. Just It's an abstract two-player game. I'm fine. You should uh, you should <coughs> say it's an alternate Onitama game because that's really what this looks like to me. This looks like well, straight it looks like Onitama. Onitama. It looks the way more that they like, work. to me, it looks like the, uh, the wooden tiles one that you like. What's that called? Oh, uh, the Duke? Yeah. Yeah. Each of the characters has a specific different way in which they move, as right. they show you here. The problem being, miniatures in this game hurt more than help. Yeah. I need to remember that the guy with the robe moves diagonally. Mm -hmm. And the guy with the cannon 
shoots three straight forward. Mm -hmm. A tile that has literally that printed, printed on, it on it yeah, would be more useful. Or the Onitama cards. That being said, yeah. I really like how these look. Do They're you? neat looking. Yeah. Everything's a rendering, though. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they've produced anything. But I feel like the form factor here was a reach. Yeah. They're reaching for something that is not feasible when this game isn't already a classic. Yeah. If you're producing a deluxe version of a classic, yes. For your first printing, go go with something attainable. Yeah. Yeah, it's their first created project. Um, <clears throat> and maybe that's it. Maybe they just didn't kind of have an understanding of the scope. Uh, we'll it's, see. It's, yeah. It's a this nice looking the, page, I'll say that. They did, they did a nice yeah, job with yeah. the page. I will say, this is the one way in which a miniatures filled project fails, though. Yeah. The only way, basically. Right. If it's an abstract, an abstract game. abstract, yep, make it an abstract. If you make it a fantasy thing and you throw some monsters and whatever and craziness in there, put right. some dice in this, it'll fund. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dice! Let's metal dice! Go. Seven unique metal dice <clears throat> designed by seven incredible artists. By the way, I, I really think if you're going to have a set of dice made, have them designed by one artist so they're uniform. But, yeah, these look pretty uniform. They're, they're making decent money, too. Uh, 25000 Um They're cool, but what's what's the point of them? <coughs> Do these have pips? I'm, I was very confused. I think it's the stuff here on the side. Like, you need <clears throat> to know what each one oh, does. Oh, no, no, I got it. Okay, go back down. I get it now. So the little, K, little stars, <laughs> they're like... I guess the lion's the one. <laughs> Two, three, four, five. Okay. Well, they're right. literally not this. usable because of this. They are, uh, yeah, they're for aesthetics. I see. That one has a number. Okay, very but small But it's really number. small. Yeah. And this one, you can barely see them. Yeah, yeah. They're, These are for show. To, to anime fans, very clearly. Right. I just like the way the dice looked in this picture. And yeah. that was it. That they're etched and painted. I mean, that that's a nice look. And they're metal. I mean, how much are they? They're going to be extremely heavy. Right. One for twenty bucks, though. Ooh. Let's go. I want the one with the heart. <laughs> okay. Black oh. Widow Spider Edition Grandmasters. One by the, by Devo. The... Devo. Mm-hmm. Crack that whip. Hmm. Um, Very you know what I would love for them to show me the cards. <laughs> well, the There's cards are right here. There. That's it. That's the only image where you get to see some of the cards. That oh, really? They don't issue. show anywhere else? They, they, they really don't. They show the back. They show the Oh, box. here. Well, you can see the ace. Mm. Whatever. Show me the cards. This, all, this whole playing coy thing makes it look like you're hiding something. <laughs> right. Just show me all the it's cards. It's also very dark. It's like, well, I know really, you don't like really that, dark. that it's all black, right? No, I don't. I like the concept of these, but yeah, this really felt like they That's were showing... The Devo concept? <laughs> no, but this felt like that guy who has a a nice car, mm -hmm. and they sell you some small box and keeps putting it on a nice car, and you're like, oh, that's a nice car. And yes, uh, yeah, oh. absolutely. They keep and making it like nice patterns, mm -hmm. a lot of lighting tricks. And you look at it, you're like, that's a cool picture. That's yeah. a cool picture. But what am I backing? Now, right. that being said, I like the... I hate spiders, but I like the little spiders in those aces. That's kind of cool. That I'm getting you a whole bunch of spider uh, decks. Like cards. I like yes. this ace card. That's a cool looking ace card. This, but this this does nothing for me here. Yeah. All right. What about this? Catapult feud Hydra. Here's the only thing that bugged me about this. That you look at the videos, they don't show the Hydra. The Hydra is the coolest thing on this. If you don't get, because you have this, right? Yes. If you don't get the Hydra, you're crazy. That's the coolest Come thing. Come on now. Okay, so this was originally it was called Catapult Kingdoms. Right. They changed the name to Catapult Feud. I'm not sure it was probably a, a copyright thing or yeah, whatever. Yeah, probably. So Catapult Feud is essentially similar to Crossbows Weapons and, catapults, and right? Weapons and Warriors. Mm. Um, weapon. There's a quote. I thought right it's Crossbows and Catapults. Is that the same thing? What did that What did that handsome man say? Ooh. It says. I like that that says at some point I'll be too old to play with it, maybe, and then my grandkids will come in and we'll play it together. I did not know I was having a grandkid when, when I made it. that statement. Yeah, you're, old, you're, ah. too, you're too old, <laughs> basically, I'm, right now. That's right. This is, you know you want this or not, basically, exactly. based on it. Do you want to shoot shots and stuff at someone else's <laughs> castle and knock over their pieces? Then you get the game. Then you, you don't want to do that? It sounds stupid to you, then right. don't. Yeah, 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 that yeah. one, that one. The second one. <laughs> no, I, I like this. I have this at my house. Yeah. So I have, 
You have so, the volcano, that ridiculous volcano. I don't like the volcano. I yeah, got rid yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. The volcano wasn't interesting to me because it's this big, heavy piece. You drop right. a ball, and then the ball rolls, and if it hits something, then that got hit by the... But it doesn't actually knock it over. It just bumps into it, right? Yeah. yeah. Everything else, though, I like. I love these beehives. Mm -hmm. They're made out of, like, eraser material. Mm -hmm. So when you shoot them, they, they'll, they'll, they'll like, bang, they just... You don't know where they're going to go. They go yeah, crazy. Yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha. And that's fun. And that the new thing here is this Hydra. Oh, I love that. And Hydra. I believe... I think is that the only new thing I okay let me look Got here I have catapult. catapult feud okay okay and siege I have the have. siege expansion yeah. yes I remember we got like boxes and boxes you have that I too. have that the artificer's tower <laughs> that's the I new do not one, have baby. the hydra so expansion the hydra looks like a, its own catapult basically yes. right with and shield fireballs, back fireballs. I love <laughs> everything about the hydra. I had the volcano. I didn't keep that. That's the yeah. one I didn't keep. I have the Vikings. I, th I really think the, Hy the Hydra is the new thing, Tom. Hydra's new, but also if you want to get it. Right, right. I think this is a way Ooh, to get it. Holiday ammunition. Oh, wait a minute now. Oh, shoot oh, Christmas time trees. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I want those. Tree ammo pieces. That's fantastic. That's great. I have the hive ammunition. Yep. Dice? dice ammunition. That's wait, new. what? Rubber dice? I don't have that either. Royal Feast. Yeah, Camilla was telling me about this. Yeah, yeah you smelly fish. fish right? I love it. I don't have this. Yeah, well, you gotta get the. You, you gotta, gotta get, get the fish. fish. <laughs> we have a, a promo for this in our Kickstarter, oh, we by do, the way. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Battlefield Supremacy, the ultimate 40k gaming experience. So interestingly enough, so I'm looking through this project, and it feels like they're trying to. Because the one thing you hate miniature games is yeah. measuring. Well, one well, yeah, of the many things. They're trying to kind of take that out of the equation to an extent. They are, but is it? Is there a huge market for that? Like, I don't know. I, I like the idea of not measuring. I just don't know that I want to take a game that does it right. and transform it. Just give me a new game that doesn't measure. I almost got the yeah. impression that it was maybe even more for the opposite end of things, for the super tryhards. It's like, okay, well, now you don't have to question whether it's it's either physically touching that that template piece or it's not this so that you still can you know oh, of course you can do that of sort course. of is it touching it right, is it right, not right. touching from it? experience <laughs> yeah you will need to take your phone do the macro zoom that is amazing and you'll sit there and argue whether it's that's, see, touching that's it or not these are just not for me i i get that there are plenty of people that love them and more power to you. I think they look amazing set up. I love to watch them. I love to see the, the completed dioramas and stuff. Notice I, they're showing very little 40k sure, stuff. Sure, sure. Because you know there's a lawyer from Games Workshop going, mm -hmm. going through these pictures with a <laughs> yeah. fine tooth comb. Right. <laughs> there's clearly going to be a market for this, you yeah. know, but um, it's not Templates are, are cool. I like mm -hmm. those templates. Oh yeah, I, 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 I was scrolling through this. The whole top half of the, the this is Spanish. Yes. And they like scroll down to the bottom for English. Yeah, and Which, it's not just those template pieces. It's also the terrain, and it's also that mat. I think it's a cool concept. Yeah. I just don't know, like, let's say I was still playing 40K, and I'm like, oh, I want to try this. Now i got to convince my opponents that they also sure. want to try it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Titan, Pantheon of the Gods trading card game. I have issues with this. <laughs> yeah. It's making $130,000, and you tell me what you're buying here. At no point do they show you a card. They don't the show video you is merely cinematic. Yes, nothing in the video. <clears throat> There's five energy types, the elemental types. That's great. At no point do they talk about It's crazy the to card, me. The card that they show here It's a has, card frame. It's that. a frame, and it, it says card long name. Description of the card goes here type of a thing. It's like they haven't designed a single they card can't even. They can't even put a, a like a fake like you know example card other than that. I, I don't get how this is making this much money. I'm calling shenanigans on this. I don't understand. The fact there's 131,000 backed by only 238 people, which means right. that's an average of almost $500 a person. This just backing makes no something sense. where there's almost no information. And as far and I could be wrong here. I don't but get it. But as far as I can tell, this is not based off of a pre-existing thing where you've already got a built-in base. Because I think this says first pro, first project created. Unless this is coming off of something that, and this is possible, that there's already a pre-existing Titan IP out there, maybe a whole community of Titan players that we've never heard of. Titan lovers, I Titan believe Titan lovers. Called, yeah. uh, but I'm not aware of it. This looks odd to me. Well, there's, there's two things. One, I've heard <laughs> that some people 
invest in these TCGs. Yeah, I've heard that too. Hoping it will go up big. But also, and this is completely unrelated to this for libel reasons, mm -hmm. I've heard some people might launder money through Kickstarter. I've, yes. Um, that's, I'm mm. not talking about this project, obviously. Right, right, right. But it could happen. It's Some might say. Some, I, I gotta feel like some projects might do that, yes. Yeah. I just this keeps happening right. with CCG projects. It seems it just odd. seems weird. I would get it if there was out there and I saw a community getting excited. Right. There's no community here. There's 238 backers. Again, when we do our Kickstarter, we obviously watch the money amount sure. because we want to fund. But we also look at the number of backers. Sure. We're excited about that. We're like, wow, <coughs> 3,000 backers. Right. That, here I'd be like, only 238 people are interested in this game? Yeah, it's weird I, to me. I don't get this one. A CCG at all. can't. You can't even live see, off like, 238 right. people. If they right. are gonna do. Um, if someone is gonna do a money laundering CCG thing, I think they should be more obvious though. <laughs> You'd be like launder clash. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, 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 right. We'll see how far you can push it before Kickstarter goes. Hmm. Huh. It would take a lot for Kickstarter to. Uh, okay. Anyway. Probably. Resin dice, core of contemporary art. That's a very weird. It's a title. They're not writers, okay? They're no, artists. they're clearly not, yeah. So, this is... I don't, I don't dislike this little web stuff inside the, the dice. Yeah, the little, the, the kind of metal web under underneath it is, is, I think, pretty cool looking. I don't know, again, how usable they really are, and I also no, don't think they're cheap. Uh, they're pretty expensive. Right, they're, are, they're art work. They're being considered more art work than, than anything Than a else. functional yeah, yeah. piece of, yeah. I don't know how legible they are, but they are certainly cool looking. Yeah, it's a it's a neat idea. That's neat. That mm -hmm. filigree filling kind of thing is, right. is neat. Yeah, and it does make you wonder why hasn't that done been been done before? It seems like yeah, this seems obvious, right? But it hasn't been done that I've seen. Yeah. All right. I love it. Mm -hmm. Blazon, is that the way to pronounce it? I think in the video they said Blazon. Yeah. Blazon. All right. So this one is kind of a this. I don't know. Maybe we've seen so much other. Right. Nonsense. I looked at this and I was like, something different. Well, a couple of things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, especially in this order, you look at this right. and you go, look at the professionalism. Yes. Well, art by Ian O'Toole, so that's going to that's gonna help because he has a very clean, illustrator-esque art style. Sure. And I think that that, you know, and, and 25th Century has put out some games that we've liked. Uh, you yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if there's one thing, I think 25th Century... Their quality keeps getting it better. It does seem to get yes. better and better and better. And I also do feel like, and this could be looked at as a positive or a negative, I felt like within about 30 seconds, I knew what this game was. It's like, yeah. oh, okay. You've got cards that are going to be either used as currency or you play them down in patterns with certain restrictions on your little player board, and there's going to be some variable scoring goals. Got it. It's the reason very, why I it's got almost it, like Sagrada yeah. the card game. <coughs> kind of sorta, yeah. Right. Yeah. It feels like Sagrada or looks like Sagrada. Right. I don't find the I think it's a very again professional looking project. Yeah. I just don't find it very exciting. Mm -hmm. You know it looks like an Osprey game. It has that vibe to it too, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. Like the King is dead, all that sort yeah. of Ryan yeah, Baru, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it has that, that that kind of a vibe. I don't know, too. I'm kind of interested in this. And again, yeah. it might be because I'm just like, whoo! Yeah, this land. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. I do like that it's not a theme you've seen. It's not maybe the most exciting theme, but it's not one you've seen a million times. Well, I would be on board based on 25th century. Sure, because yeah, I yeah. like what they do. I think their stuff's great. They have. Yes. They have. Side note, they also have promos on our Kickstarter. So sure, there's sure. that. But I like. I haven't liked every 25th century game for mm -hmm. sure. But recently. I've liked them more than not. I mean, what's the the Christmas Holly one? Holly Jolly. We I really there. like Holly Jolly. Mm -hmm. I played That's that. Really I liked fun. it and reviewed it, and then you played it even after I was done, and you really liked it. So. Yeah, I did. Yep. Well, I, I keep hoping for a good Christmas themed game. Yeah. You yes. know, That's one of my hopes. Yes. Well, keep your eyes out for the news tomorrow. Crowd surf. Or uh, no, uh, bro board game breakfast news. There's a Christmas game. No. Oh, we're little, breakfast is little, tomorrow. A little mm -hmm. late or very early, one of the yes, two. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I was interested in these a lot. Okay. These, mm -hmm. I don't understand everything. It's Vitrum <laughs> playing cards, the first LED powered metal deck. Yeah. I just, I like how they looked. So, yeah. The, the it's almost stained glass. The, there's a couple of weird things. The deck has LED lights in it. You set the deck box down. 
and it lights up like in a mosaic. As a matter of fact, it used to be called mosaic, and they had to change the name for probably, I, who knows what the reasons are. But mm -hmm. um, it also seems to have some type of a chip in the box that's almost like a, <coughs> I don't know if it's NFT or not, so I don't want to get into any of that because, first of all, I don't understand it. But it makes it a unique, each box, deck box is unique. 100% I agree and, with them. You know, and you can check it on your phone. All of that aside, I kind of like the looks of these. I cards. do too. I kind of like I the really looks of like these. I like that all art the with that mosaic ones. in the background. Yeah, all of the different because they've got these Although, different is that lady styles. A skeleton. She looks very skeletal. She does yeah. look a little bit, but yeah, I. It definitely has a little bit of an anime-ish look, but but I like I kind of like the look of it. It's a very and those are amazing. Those look great. Regular cards. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm good with that. I like that. Mm -hmm. Everything else. It's just a little too esoteric for me. I you don't think I get it. I don't understand it. And it, frankly, it scares me. <laughs> I don't, do you wish, though, that they'd cut these black corners off? No, I like them. You do? I think, I, I think it helps. I think all of those are super sharp. I would actually put one of those on the wall. Yeah, yeah. I, of, the, I, of the ace cards. Those look really good. I like the ace in ace idea. Yeah, those and look And the one, and the great. spade is the different color. Mm -hmm. Because that's used as a yeah as a, a lot of different things, right? right. The, the Ace of Spades is the is the starting player in some games, right? What? No. Was that the Two of Clubs? All right, I don't know. No, the Ace of Spades is normally the one distinct Ace. Yeah. But but m many custom decks do it for all of them. They need to color swap that Ace of Spades. Mm. It's backwards. All right. Well, anyway, the other one. Wait, the they clubs. Do, you can put them on you, the wall. Yeah, you can get art. You can get art. Yeah, baby. How are you not backing this? Mm -hmm. 170 is a lot, man. How <laughs> are you not backing this? I think they're pretty slick, but but it's a very stylized thing. It's, if you don't like it, you don't like it, you know? Yeah, no, it's a good looking, uh, you know it's good it, looking artwork. You know they are expensive, though. Holy moly. It reminds me of the art from 65 bucks. What's the Seiji Kanai game before it got picked up by AEG? Was it Love Letter? The original Love Letter kind of looked like so. this. I mean, all his games, the original, yeah, the original eight printings, epics, those kind of things. Yeah, remind R, me of that. Yeah, yeah. The old R or triple R. Yeah, or whatever, it reminds yeah. me of those games. I wonder if I can just. This is Pledge Without a Reward, but if you pledge, wow, Pledge Without a Reward, fifteen bucks. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> that's the no, lowest <laughs> you can get in on this. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Ham's <clears throat> Sandwich Shop. That's right, baby. So this is in that realm of cute games. Um, oh, yeah. how disgusting. <laughs> yeah, if you saw that, you'd be like, oh, that's a cute picture. Throw I'm the never going to eat a sandwich again. <laughs> this is a game where, where the, the yeah, these it's supposed to be these hamsters are chefs, and it's almost got like a patchwork thing where the, where the ingredients are in a circle around the outside, and you move this little thing around, and when it passes one of the sunflower seeds, you take one of these, uh, those cards, and you put it onto one of the sandwiches, so they're diving into the bread. But they make it they make it clear. Look, you're not eating the hamsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which is very. It looks funny. like he's one of the fillings. Yeah, yeah, yeah one yeah. of the many ingredients. Yeah, it feels like he's a. Um, it looks like, like he's supposed a, to be eating it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's not what it is. This is going for a very you know specific kind of. Uh, that's aesthetic. cute. It gets very cute. It um, reminds me of Slamwich, actually. Yeah. That's what I thought of. That was the first thing I thought of when I mm -hmm. saw all the ingredients and the bread. I'm like, Slamwich? Right. Kind of has that vibe, right? Yeah. So there's that. And then there's also a uh, Pinocchio game, I guess, an older one that they're... He dives into a wood shredder. He dives into a wood shredder. Yeah. But there it is right there, Pinocchio. Uh, but it's the, the name of the game is not Pinocchio. I can't remember the name. It's very... It's very uh, Pinocchio's nose? No, no. It you can't it read it. It's a very... It did say it right there. Pinocchio's oh, nose. nose. Interesting. On the box cover, it says something different. Okay. Pinocchio's face. No. That's kind of creepy. That's his eyes and his nose. Yeah. Oh, that's what that is? Yeah. Oh, I don't love that. Uh -huh. <laughs> All righty. Well, before we go to the, the non-Kickstarter projects, I'm going to put a poll oh. here in the chat. Let me pull this up. Nope. That was the wrong one. There's the poll itself. And let's just so folks can vote on the one they uh, like the most. Vote on the one or ones that you like the best. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, of course, I need to get to the chat. Then you I can need do to it, mute Tom. This. I believe in you. I, there I, we go. That only took like ten steps. All right. It's pretty good. So the poll is out there. You're not old. Okay. Don't let no, anybody tell you you're no, old. Not let's at all. go to um, non-game stuff. And by the way, folks, you can send us these. Send them to me at tom at dicetower.com. 
And if it amuses me or I think it's cool, usually the amusing part, but <laughs> you never know. Yeah, yeah. Have, we got, ba have you backed any of these? I guess Fingerbot. No, you bought Fingerbot after market. You late pledged it, I think, right? Yes. Um, I've done a few of them. I did the... Oh, we did the, the squeeze, the, the, the syrup. Yeah, the maple you syrup. You say the maple syrup for <laughs> joggers or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For bikers. Right. I that did was, the gelatin, the cube dice. You did do that, You yeah. did the soaps, right? Also yes, that, yeah, yeah. Got, and I did the perfume, the cologne with the... No, I did not do the app with the cologne. <laughs> what about you the did the fish mash. Uh, oh, Mike. <laughs> Mike Delisio's in my brain. Right. ninja So here's a project that I need someone to chat to tell me what it is. Because it says make the impossible possible. I want to know what the impossible is. So this is a pen. Well, what's the wait, description wait, is of the very top say? The first device capable of pigment in the air. Just write, draw, and color. What does that mean? They don't okay. have a video. No. And they explain it. They're like, you draw in the air, and it stays there. Well, show me. What? Is it smoke? Yeah. Is it light? It's apparently, they do say, in a very throwaway kind of way, this device was developed with a pigment that remains suspended in a gaseous environment such as air. Yes, but what's Simply the pigment? Put, you can, uh, it's suitable for painting in the air. And what does that mean? I assume it is, it has a propellant and you press it and that the, the, the colored bits will sus be suspended in air. For how long? For a moment. As soon as the air changes, that then the paint, painting so is, is not going to... So is this just gonna... like skywriting? Airplane skywriting or something? Basically, but... It's uh, Wally Coyote. I quick at the pen. I'm like, draw. <laughs> and the guy I have to it assume it's going to, dis it's going to shift very quickly. I would think Especially so. Especially with an air current. Also... Proof of concept. Something. Give this me a nothing. You're yeah. showing me nothing here. Yeah, right. I, I, this was a. I, I want this to know what this is because I know they make those pens. I don't know if you've seen them where you can make 3D. The 3D thing. Yeah, it yeah, just yeah, excretes yeah. plastic. Right, I right, mean, right. it's basically a 3D printer, but sure. it's just a small one, and you can draw like a three-dimensional item that if you touch it, it collapses. They're yeah. very, they're, they're pretty flimsy. I was yeah, almost getting a vibe of like, you know when people do those long exposures and they have light pens, and they'll write with a light pen, and you do the long exposure, and then the picture shows what yes. they're writing. Right. If you can get a vibe like that, if you can get that kind of an effect in real time, that might be cool. Probably also deadly, deadly poison, I but assume. it would be a very cool, <laughs> you know, a very cool effect if you can make that. Yes. All right, let's yeah. go to one that's actually real. Colonel Commander. <laughs> well, it's it not really funny yet, Tom, I would have called it Colonel Colonel. Bucks. Yeah. Come on, you, you missed out on your they, opportunity they, they, there. They did. Also, that looks like a bean. Yeah, it it's looks like a It's supposed to be an unpopped uh, Colonel. All right, so, do your kids... <laughs> mm -hmm. What are you doing to your popcorn uh, yeah. that your kids... So, you don't want your kids' hands to look like right. this. No, right. I do not. So, instead, you take this 3D printed <laughs> device... Right, right, right. And instead of having a simple Let's, task... Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Snap it down, <laughs> right? I feel like you know, like when you're in an airplane, when they do the 20 set, 20 minute thing to show you. They feel like you need a, a yeah, someone yeah, to yeah. show you how this works. Here's the thing: so it has this little thing that can catch the kernels. That's a cool idea. First also, of all, it's not if you get most take of them. a scoopful of popcorn, and your fingers naturally do there that. Is that. The other thing is, then your fingers are nasty. Most people. <laughs> now, I, I'm going to venture to say most people don't choose that super healthy. Microwave popcorn that has no salt, no nothing. Usually people are going to get the salted. Maybe they're going to get the stuff with like the, the cheese powder or you're going to put your own powder on there. That means you have to wash this every single time. Not only that, you're shaking this thing down. You're going to get it all over your face. It's going to get in your eyes. You're right. You want to hit? Right? All you're of that right. cheese dust is going to be everywhere. <laughs> you're going to be a catastrophe. Wait, how are you doing? You're doing this. You got the cheese in your hair. Wow, it took us a song to get the complete catastrophe. It's, look, this, oh, this doesn't Mike work. is using this thing for us as a beauty product How many times this does point? this happen to now, you? Okay, so be the best part of this project was, right. I looked at these and I thought, those are interesting flavors for popcorn. Yeah, coconut curry. Coconut curry. Coconut. Yeah, if they offered this stuff, I'd be in. Like, yeah. get the get the thing. <laughs> I know. But also, we'll send you some flavorings. I was excited when I saw the flavorings because yeah. I thought, that's what I could get. Because you know I backed that stuff. <laughs> oh, you would. Oh, yeah, you yeah, would. Yeah. I was very disappointed when I was like, oh, that was just yeah, this is, examples. Yeah, this, yeah, no. I, I get it. That's a, a, a neat idea, but uh, I agree that this it might get messy. This is definitely a QVC messy. item. <laughs> it's it's a, my it word. Messy, yeah. It really, really is. There's my grandmother would have bought these for me for my birthday. <laughs> yeah, 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 you shake it right into your right into your gullet. That's the idea here. All right. 
<laughs> All right, this one, this this one, one was canceled. This one was canceled, but right. I was very amused by this. So it's, hey, you know, I get this. We have this right. problem all the time. We have to empty our garbage all the sure, time. Sure. We have recycling. Mm -hmm. When you put it in recycling, you put it in the trash. Right. At my house, constantly overflowing. No one wants to empty it. You know, right. there's that same problem everyone has. Here's a way, a solution. Mm -hmm. You can put it in this, and it just goes whoop right out in your recycling yep. bin. Look, if there's anything that I'm looking for <laughs> in a Kickstarter project, it's the uh, having to cut. <laughs> Into my tile backsplash to make it usable. I love this. It's a hole in your wall. You're cutting holes into your home. <laughs> and they make it sound like you're not supposed to use plastic bags still. So you're just dumping trash right into those things. Uh, they're going to be filthy. I don't think, and I don't, and I don't think you're allowed to do that either. I, don't think I think so you need either, to put yeah. a bag. Trash needs to be bagged, I think. I think so, yeah. I don't. And then, also, the. Is there a way to keep things from coming through that hole the other way? I don't know. And it, like, like raccoons, the thing does you mean? close. It has sort of has like a slow retraction right. when you push it. You can just press the top and see her like throw some stuff away. Yeah. Or also, right there, look. Those see, instantly become like, uh, yeah. those instantly become cat and dog doors too. Make no mistake, your <laughs> oh animals are going down jumping there. They're jumping in the trash. Absolutely, they are, and they can come back up too. Uh, I yeah. don't hate the problem. That. Is I like this before. They're also <laughs> going to become very dirty. Those little doors, and they are going to become filthy. And the little part that goes from the door to the thing. How are you going to ever clean those? Yeah, you also, can't clean from the uh, no. from the outside in. I hate pictures like this where they show before and after. Mm -hmm. They show that giant box there in the garbage can. You didn't stick that box through that <laughs> hole. No, you did not. Yeah. No, you did not. You, so did you cut it up? Right. You could do the same thing with the trash. And also. Essentially, you're just taking that picture before and sticking it behind the wall. Right. I could also buy you a door that does the same thing yeah. before. <laughs> Look, it's not there anymore. The other thing is you could just cut a couple of holes in your in your walls and just throw <laughs> trash out the holes, right? I don't like That's that. another right. solution Moving right there. On. Trash Maybe hole. Dig a moat, you know? Throw it all in the moat. I'm mystified at this because I, I'm a... This you one know, already funded, right? It did. Yeah. You know, I'm a pyromaniac. Yeah, baby oh, foot well fire known. is definitely for and you. And even I wouldn't get this. <laughs> Why not, Tom? Because I would burn my house down or my kid would <laughs> fall into it. That's gorgeous. Look at that. Yeah. Look, all you got to do is spread a little kerosene <laughs> on little, your yeah. fine dining table and then light it. We're going to do this with games from choose that you, one. We're choose right your here. favorite accelerant. Uh, is that yeah. what it says? No, no. They say, oh, isopropyl. No. They say isopropyl alcohol. Maybe um, I'm just off on this one. This just seems... Like, the only way I would have this is if I lived in a house with only adults. Mm. And they had several holes in the wall. <laughs> That's right. So that, if, so that if this fire got out of hand, I could right. jump through the hole. Jump through the hole. <laughs> I'm saying. Mm. Would you, would you yeah. have, like, taking price out of the equation, would, would you get one of these? For an inside do inside table? Yes. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. But it seems like that's what they were oh, pushing no, it here. It is definitely for put it on your dining room I'm table. I'm not going to set any open flame that is clearly <laughs> this large. I'll, I'll have a candle. Aren't I'll you? give you a candle. Hey, I'll even go as far as the as to do the one with the three wicks. Sure, do the three wicks. I'm, I'm willing to see <laughs> that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I will not set my table ablaze. Okay. No, this is too much. It yeah. just seems for me, very dangerous. For me, this is too much. It does seem a bit Especially like sitting there. There's just like... A box of fire. Right. There's a nice accent piece for outside, maybe, mm. you know? Yeah. Yes, if I had a even an indoor back porch with the screens, That's okay. I'd feel safer. That's nice. That's yeah, a nice idea. A little idea. bit better, yeah. yeah. And but, again, with no kids <clears throat> or pets. Right, yeah. yeah. But either one of those would freak me out. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, We're hey. Done. Support <laughs> night. Hey, that's the same as it was when it started. No, it went yeah. up! Yeah. Closer, ever closer. Yeah, I got good news, guys. There's, well, I don't know if it's good news, but there's no way we can get 7,000 in the next five minutes. That's true. We don't have to worry about so Kenny. So no air horn for y'all this That's year. That's right. That is right. Actually, we don't We're even safe. know if Kenny's here. We're I, uh, safe. Well, Relatively he might... safe. Relatively safe. All right. Yeah, I don't know. Let's, uh... Are we looking at the, uh... We're looking at my looking screen, at? apparently. We are. We're we looking at the people's happening? choice. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> that was my fault. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you... Oh, yeah. Before the people's choice, let's... Oh, oh we have to give our, our, to give our picture. Yeah, right. Look, 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 look,
Z. Prognosis death. Yes, really? baby. That's what I'm going with. Yeah. Absolutely. It's dark. Mm -hmm. It's kind of creepy a little bit. It just seems uh, esoteric also, enough to be my jam. It's also apparently my crowd surfing pick of the week. <laughs> um, there we go. Yeah. Prognosis death. death. <laughs> Open right. flame hole. Mine is going to be the catapult. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, gotta I get really that like hydra. this one. And oh, so it's funny because in the, in the quote, I said, mm -hmm. the quote says, I'm like, I'm going to keep this in my house for my yeah. son. And that's where it is right yeah. now. It's at my house. It's right. I don't have many games in my house. This is one of them. Yeah. It's more of a toy than a game, really. Sure, sure. sure. We don't even necessarily play with the. There's those cards, and you can play cards to do special things. I'm like, eh, let's just <laughs> shoot just, at just the castles. Fling, set, yeah, set it fling up and play. Yeah. Right, what do you think people said? Um, maybe, maybe the TCG. <laughs> No. Uh, so let me see Blaze, the list. Can I, oh, you, I can't see the list Blaze without on, can't see the list without seeing the vote. You yeah, think Blaze on? Maybe so. I guess so. I don't know. All right. Well, I can do this cool thing you just showed me. Ooh. It oh, is Blaze on. Okay. And oh, Rise of the Necromancers. Yeah, that's right up there too, isn't it? Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then the catapult uh, feud. Right. Wait. Five people voted for the TCG. Mm. What? The money laundering mm. is maybe, hitting us. Even. Maybe we're missing something. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and the sandwich shop is up there pretty high, too. I think that art is going to be appealing to a lot of people. No one picked Third the black... Oh, no, one person picked okay. the Black Widow spider cards. Mm. And the metal cards are also near uh, the bottom there yeah. for one vote. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Prognosis death, though, coming in after the obvious... Yes. ...like three or four. Mm-hmm. So I'm all over it. All right, well, now that you're done watching this, folks, go take a closer look at our Kickstarter. Consider backing it. Um, and tomorrow... We start the top 100 games of all time. Well, Ooh, I better get our, on my list. One of our top 100 games of all time. So that's going to be me, Z, and Mike, and the people's choice, who have a, their own champion, mm -hmm. um, who you used to be, but the people have yeah, rejected you. I've, I have been shunned by the people. And then mm -hmm. our A team, uh, Camilla, Wendy, Chris, and, and Roy, they're going to be doing their top 100 if we reach a stretch goal, which yeah. it looks like we probably will. Well, we hope. Fingers Hopefully. crossed. Fingers we'll crossed. We'll Later see. on this year. So lots of cool things coming. Oh, we're playing... Merchant's Cove. Why is it we? You're playing Merchant's Cove tomorrow. Yeah, myself, Chris, and Camilla are going to do a live play of my favorite game from last year, Merchant's Cove. Ooh, I thought he was about to spoil his uh, top 100 of all time. No, oh, from right? last year, man. My last favorite year. game of all time. <laughs> Cut. There's a lot right. of goodies tomorrow mm -hmm. already. Okay, okay. Yeah. And of course, we have breakfast in the morning as well. Oh, Correct. yeah, it's true. <laughs> breakfast. I should have mentioned that first. Lots going on. Yes. Lots going on tomorrow. Oh, Big live, day. live, live dice hour all the time. We'll see you then. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Mike Delicio. Have fun starting your table on fire. No.